Okay, let's rationalize the denominator. That means let's get, the, get rid of the radicals in the basement. And what we do is we take this denominator and multiply by, by what's called its conjugate. We use the same binomial over here, multiply by it, except for we change the sign in the middle. So we don't use a 3 plus the square root of 7, we use a 3 minus the square root of 7. But if we multiply the bottom by that, we have to multiply the top by that, because we have to be multiplying by the number 1. The same thing on top and the same thing on the bottom. If we multiply all of that by 1, we get the same answer. But it's going to get rid of the radical in the basement. Because when we FOIL that denominator, so when we take this right here, let's do it down below here, and FOIL it, this 3 times 3 is 9. From now on, we won't show these next two steps. But I have a minus sign right here, and 3 times the square root of 7 is 3 times the square root of 7. Plus sign right here, these two are going to be multiplied together, and 3 times the square root of 7 is 3 times the square root of 7. Finally, this plus times this minus is a minus, and the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is 7. When you multiply um, this binomial by its conjugate, what happens is that its middle terms add to be 0. We've seen one like this already before. This minus 3 square root of 7 plus 3 square root of 7 is 0. And so I just get to take this 9 and that minus 7 and get a value of 2, and that's what's in my denominator. So I've gotten rid of the radicals in my basement. They're gone. Upstairs, I have to take this monomial and multiply it times this binomial. So I have to distribute it. So 5 times 3 is 15. And 5 times the square root of 7, with this minus sign here, is 5 times the square root of 7. And I'm all done. If by chance this um, denominator had a common factor with these two terms, I would reduce that. But this one does not. Let's go ahead and do another one where there's binomials everywhere. I'm looking at the denominator, and I want the conjugate of the denominator. That's going to have a plus sign in there. Still the square root of 3, still the square root of 2, but with a plus sign. And so upstairs, I have to multiply that by the square root of 3 plus the square root of 2. Downstairs, I know that when I multiply this binomial times this binomial, my inner and outer terms will add to be 0. So I'm not going to write them down anymore. It's a guaranteed thing. So I will do these first terms. I'll multiply them together. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. Or from now on, say to yourself, the square root of something times the square root of the same thing is a 3. And then the last term is always these two right here. So you have to take this sign and this sign, and they are always opposite. So there will always be a minus sign right here. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. And 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. So the denominator of this problem is a 1. So I'm not even going to have to write it down. And I've gotten rid of my radicals in the basement. Upstairs, I have to FOIL these expressions. I have to take 2 times the square root of 3, and then I have to take 2 times the square root of 2 with a plus sign. 2 times the square root of 2. Then I have a minus sign here times a positive. Those are my inner terms. So a minus square root of 7 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 21. And then finally, this minus sign times this plus sign is a minus. And square root of 7 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 14. And there is nothing up there that can be combined. None of those light are like terms. That can't be reduced because it's only 3 times 7. That's only 2 times 7. Can't pull anything out over that denominator 1. Don't need to write that one. Your answer will be just what's in the numerator. We have rationalized the denominator by multiplying by what's called the conjugate. It just involves multiplication. Uh, you know, we have this problem that looks like a division problem, but it's multiplying the denominator, the denominator through, and multiplying the numerators through, and simplifying if I can.